<laughs> this is gonna be funny. All right, guys, so I know in one of our last videos we said that we were going to just kind of skip forward to the flying of the plane, but I felt there was still a few set steps that we could cover in the build of the Extreme Flight Yak. So uh, the next step is setting up the wings. So I'm going to go over this. Um, you notice John's not here. Uh, it's a bit of a drive for him to get here to the shop to do the setup, so uh, to do these videos. So I'm going to go ahead and get these shot, send them up to him. He's going to get them edited, and we'll get them out to you. So anyways, let's dive in. Uh, we got the servo already set here and ready to go uh first thing we got to do is we got to check this and we want to see you know how far we need to go so you can see our extension almost reaches to the end of the wing here so we're going to go ahead we're going to use about a six inch extension on this so what i want to do is i want to make sure that this extension that runs through the wing is protected so what i will do here is i will go ahead and use my pliers which i have set aside here and we'll go ahead and stretch out some of this heat shrink like we did before to this to uh, shore up the end of our expandable braided sleeving so or sleeving we'll show you how we do that here I'm just gonna take a little piece of the heat shrink here stretch it out enough to where it will go over our servo connector and then what we do is we take our extension we're going to use for our servo here we make sure we're all lined up signal to signal the rest of, are good to go there then what I like to do uh, a lot of people use tape or a drop of CA or, or floss to hold these extensions together. I like to use um, heat shrink itself. So I push, put a piece of heat shrink over this. We've got our uh, my heat gun here. Go ahead and set it on high. I'm just going to shrink this down real fast here. When you're doing this, you want to make sure you get all sides. So I just like to turn it as I go keep my hands out of the out of the heat because it does get warm enough to do some damage and leave some some blisters and there we go we got our heat shrink on and it's over here perfect so now we've got our extension set long enough to where it will run into the fuselage of the plane next step we do is we take our expandable braided sleeving here we work it on over the extension all the way down. It takes a couple minutes. Over the years, you get better and better at doing this and getting it on there how you want it. I like to run it in a ways like that. Pinch the end together. Work our heat shrinking on here like so. There you go. I like to take it up past so I know that it's... Uh, there are no free edges that are going to catch anything. Run it down to about half an inch from the actual servo there, or the grommet in the servo. Run the wire up here like so, with the heat shrink. Get our gun again, put it on hot. We shrink it down. Again, Making sure we get all angles so we get it shrunk down as far as it'll go. We're good there. Okay. Then we're going to take our next piece of heat shrink here. We're going to expand it out also to get it around the, the um, servo connector like we did before. Didn't go quite as far as I did on the first one. It's not enough. Just got to stretch a little bit more. No big deal. Better do it in little increments than overdo it and create a problem or rip it or whatever. Use the tip of our pliers here to help push through. There we go. And here we are. Okay, so now we got that on. We're going to do the same thing we did on the other side. Make sure we get all of our loose ends through. Pull it tight. As much cover as possible. I like to hold it on one end while I shrink down the other just to make sure it stays still where I want it. Shrink it down on that end. Work our way around. So now we've got our our wires ready to go. Everything's set. 
everything is good we can see it just like that there so um, we've got this all set wire ready to go now we got to get it set into the wing so we'll run the wire through the wing here no real magic to that I actually have a standby So next we'll run this wire through here. We uh, run this in. I actually have a, a, a wire, a piece of piano wire here that I've bent on one end that I use to, to fish these wires out. Make sure I'm running the route I like. So we just go in here, hook it to the wire on one end. And it doesn't come through. <laughs> see this wire in just like so. Get our servo set down in. Now we can use our little fishing line here. And actually our wire came out all the way through. Just like so. There we go. I set that aside. So now we've got our wire pulled through, routed how we want it. Got our servo in nice and neat. Next step, take our Dremel tool, just like we've done before. We'll center the servo up. These these slots are pretty tight, so it's not going to go very far, but I just like to hold it down with one finger. Now we just run this 16th inch bit through all the mounting lines. Once we're done with that, we set our Dremel aside and pop this out, keeping the wire over here. Blow off any dust we've got. Now we've got four nice neat holes. We take our pipette that we used in one of our other steps. It still has some thin CA in it. Put a couple drops on each hole here just to harden up the wood and make sure we don't have a problem with our threads pulling out. Of course I should run a, a screw down in there first so we're going to do that now. So we're going to end up double hardening this one. 64. I didn't have John here to tell me I was doing the steps out of order. So we'll cut our threads here. One down. Two down. Amazing how warm these screws get just from the friction of running through this wood. There we go. Okay. Alrighty, so there we go. Got our screws run down, now we're going to do our drops of CA in order this time. Couple drops per hole. Like I mentioned before, I like to blow on them to make sure none of the CA is in the middle going to create a, a plug, basically. I want to be careful not to inhale too much around the CA because uh, you can develop an allergy to the fumes, which is not fun if you want to keep building. Now that we got all that done, we'll put our screws back in. With the rubber grommets, like we talked about, the um, the eyelets or the, or the brass eyes that go in from the bottom and the screw head will pinch the rubber to the grommet or to of the grommet to the to the eyelet and that, that kind of gives you a vibration dampening for these servos to make sure that, you know, as it's vibrating it's not wearing on the gear train or on the servo itself. So I like to tighten them down until the rubber grommet itself kind of twists. And then you just back off about an eighth of a turn to square it up, make sure make sure everything looks good and you're good to go. It won't be a problem. There we go. Okay. So now that we got that done, we're gonna hook up our handy dandy matchmaker here that we've used a few in a few of our steps before. I'm gonna go ahead and hook it to our servo. And we're gonna make sure we have our servo centered, which we do. There we go, we're centered up and ready to go. And take our 2.5 millimeter screw. Uh, 
Allen driver here and pull our center screw off. I went ahead ahead of time and put our ball end on our arm. We're using the extreme flight one and a half inch arms on this. So we've got that on and we're just going to put this on as close to center as possible. That's pretty close. It's only about five degrees off. That's good. As we've talked about before, as I'm doing these steps, I always like to complete everything, guys. Like I said, everything, you know, you can leave 10 things for, oh, I can do this right before I go and fly the plane. And you might get, you might get five or six of them, but you're going to miss a few, I guarantee. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've watched friends of mine take their airplanes off and watch a wheel go rolling down the runway and they're like, oh, I was going to tighten that before I flew and they didn't. So try not to be that guy. All right. So I think this should be a 560 force here and it is. One out, put a little bit of thread locker on everything, so we're all ready to rock and roll. There we go. Like I say, I, uh, I ran the center screw down and backed out about an eh, eighth of a turn, just so this clamping screw can do its job. And then once I tighten that one up, now we tighten up the center screw, and we're good. Now that all that's on, we can go ahead and disconnect from our matchmaker, like so. Set that aside. We will put our top on. I like to check the ProLink style links here, make sure this is the, the regular threaded side, so that's gonna go to the arm. Start out like this. Now if you only have one person and the, and the surface is sitting flat like this, you kind of get it bound and you push the servo in and now we've got a little tension there so as we start to turn the threads are going to start to bite on these plastic pieces. It takes a little work to get it down but you'll get it. There we go. Put a little bit of pressure there. You can also kind of hold this one straight while you run this one in. There we go. Oh, bust it. Come up with the right grip to get it done. Got to make sure you get plenty of purchase on this. It's okay if it's a little off center, but you want to make sure you get plenty of threads in both sides so it doesn't pull off in flight. There we go. Now we're just going to run this down until when we're centered on this aileron, this arm is perfect, perfect, perfectly perpendicular. Can't speak well this evening. ratcheting wrench for these. It's trying to come in. We're almost there now. Perfect. All right, so there we go. Now we got it all set up, so let's get a shot here. All right, so as you can see here, we've got our arm nice and perpendicular. I'm going to go ahead and hold this. Everything tightened down, ready to go. We're looking good. Now we just have one last step. Um, I like to use these foam keepers from Terry Wiles. I'll put the link in the description below. These things are great. Um, what these do is they keep your wires in place. So, um, we got a little video here we can show you. Uh, if you notice, um, the opening in the root of the wing here doesn't exactly match the opening in the root or at the root of the wing in the fuselage. And the fuselage is just a round hole. So, what I did is I went ahead and I marked where exactly that round hole meets this opening here and that's the center of it right there so what we do is we take this little foam keeper and this just keeps wires from rattling around we cut the bottom open on it 
So now you can see the bottom's open. We put this over our servo wire and we get line it up, get it about close on the wire. And we take some regular BSI medium CA here. We put a few drops on here. Nice little coat there. Put our lid back on. And then we take this keeper and we glue it in place. Now what this does is while we're flying it keeps the wires nice and still where they need to be and keeps everything in place so it's not vibrating around the plane. So, And it's also nice because this keeps the wire from falling down into the wing in transport. So if you happen to store the wing up on end where the tip's down, this won't fall in. Now once that's sat there for a few, if you want to be sure it's going to cure, go ahead and hit it with a little bit of a kicker and we're good to go. So there you have it guys, that's how we set up the wings. Everything's got nylock nuts or thread locker on it. We've got our wire protection uh, on our extensions, making sure nothing's gonna chafe on the ribs inside the swing when we're doing our, our uh, violent 3D maneuvers or just normal flying and the vibration from the engine. And this setup will last thousands of flights guaranteed. Hope this helped you guys out and we'll be back later with some more tips.